Hi all, um, I'm Amanda from the Japanese Foundation for Cancer Research. I'm currently the group leader for the Cancer New Antigen Vaccine Development Group. Today I would like to speak with you regarding the, the NGX liquid biopsy experience that I have for the past few months on the gene access system. So with the advancement of molecular um, targeted drug, it has been a, a routine to perform molecular tumor profiling using um, the tumor biopsy. Till now, tumor is still remain the standard for molecular profiling of tumor. However, there are some limitations as there are times that the tumor tissue in, is inaccessible and not enough material sometimes um, to be obtained <coughs> for molecular profiling. In addition, this tumor um, tissue Obtaining this tumor tissue is pretty invasive as we are using a very long needle to poke through the flesh and obtain a piece of the tumor. As well, as we all know that the tumor is highly heterogeneous, needle biopsy only collect a piece of these tumors as you can, as you can see on these slides where there are three different clones in colors in green, blue, and purple. And by using needle biopsy, we were able to only see the green and blue clones and left the purple color undetected that will be subsequently regressed after treatment. Lastly, since it is very invasive, it is very difficult to repeat and it is not practical to be used as monitoring to, to monitor the disease progression. For the past few years, um, the term of liquid biopsy attracted much attention owing to its minimally invasiveness as a potential complementary approach towards the conventional biopsy. With the advancement of highly sensitive NGS, it is now possible to detect genetic alterations such as mutations, copy number variation, and fusion in our body biofluids, such as the blood plasma, the, self, um, the cerebral spinal fluids, so saliva, urine, and etc. Since liquid biopsy is circulating in the body, it helps to provide a a, a pretty comprehensive tumor profile, like what you see in this example, all the different clones might be able to detect it by using liquid biopsy. Because, also because of the minimally invasiveness, liquid biopsy could be used for sampling repeatedly for monitoring the disease status after some of the intervention, like medical intervention that would carry out such as surgery or, or treatment. So among the different types of liquid biopsies, my lab focused on circulating tumor DNA. So the, this CT DNA is shaped from the tumor cells into the circulatory system. It is either viable, it is either wire viable tumor cells or wire the secretion from phagocytes post engulfment of the tumor cells or when the tumor cells in fact go through necrosis and apoptosis. A very important point here is the half-life of this circulating tumor DNA within the body only leaves about 30 minutes to 2 hours in the bloodstream. So it gives us a very good real-time assessment of the tumor conditions. And this circulating tumor CT DNA is um, the size, it's range from 150 to 200 base pairs. As you can see at the bottom um, figure, cancer detection or um, CT DNA can be used for cancer detection or screening. It can be used for molecular profiling or pronostication. It can be used to detect minimal residual disease after some surgical intervention. It could be used for monitoring response um, of some of the treatment and eventually it could be also monitor the clonal evolution as well. So this is the routine NGS workflow in my lab. We firstly extracted the cell-free total nuclear acid, um, and we use oncomide cell-free assay or MPCHD cell-free assay for library construction and templating in the ion shaft system and sequence using ion s prime prime and data analysis was performed using ion reporter. We, besides the commercially available oncomide pan can um, bank cancer cell-free assay, we also designed two um, panels to meet our research purposes as listed here, the GFCR screening cell-free assay as well as GFCR actionable mutation cell-free assay. I would like to emphasize that the following panels 
are in fact integrated with molecular barcodes that reduce sequencing error and could help in detecting alterations at the limit of detection up to 0.1%. Even though NGS technology nowadays is highly sensitive, there are still limitations in molecular profiling. So first of all, it is very laborious. So if we send out a samples to some of the companies or laboratories, it takes up 10 days to one month, and it's definitely affecting the turnaround time and, and in order to get back the reports. The second is related to its cost performance. Most of the companies or even laboratories will try to wait until the maximum samples to be run in a chip. So there are some of the time loss during this um, waiting time as well. So these limitations has addressed by the GeneXus um, integrated um, sequences, as it is fully automated from the nucleic acid all the way to the report within a day, so that we could know the results pretty time pretty timely and additionally the system was designed that the NGS could be performed even there is one sample without wasting any extra consumables all the consumables are comes in the ch in strips so all we need to know use is only the amount according to the number of samples that we run so in addition to the Oncomine, the GeneXus system, I would like to also introduce the Oncomine precision assay that are introduced by the Term official. So this assay covers 50 genes that could detect the mutation, copy number gain or loss, and also the fusion drivers. As far as I understand that this um, panel is um, a newly designed panel with a new um, technology to detect fusions not just in the tumor tissue as well as in the cell-free um, to the nuclear acid as well. So the genes out of the 50 are in fact on labels. 19 genes is in guideline and 47 genes are already in use in global clinical trials. Bear in mind that this panel also integrated with molecular barcode that helps to reduce the sequencing error. This is particularly very important because um, this is also to detect um, the very minute mutations in the liquid biopsy. So the if there is a sequencing error or false positive, then it, it will be very difficult for us to detect the mutations pretty confidently. So do the presentation's um, contents. To, today I would like to evaluate the performance of the GeneXus sequencer with the OPA panel Firstly, using the control tissue and cell-free dota nucleic acid control samples, I will be covering the input, depth, variant calling, both the mutations and fusions. And secondly, I would like to also um, <coughs> present the results using the cell-free TNA samples um, from the non-small cell lung cancer. For this part, part of the presentation, I will go into a bit more details regarding the sequencing parameters, what will be the molecular depth and the evaluation of the amplification efficiency of the panel. And I would like to also show, cover a little bit more on the detection rate and the concordance with the tumor tissues. First on the first part. So we received two um, FFP control samples. Those These um, control samples runs in duplicates and runs in different days. And the input of the DNA is 10 nanogram, RNA also in 10 nanogram. And the overall depth is about seven, more than 7,000 X. I think this is pretty reasonable for molecular profiling. And the first FFP sample, which is the, the, the figure on the left-hand side, the first FFP control is a 5% control that contains 74 mutations. The mutations were detected, as you can see in the blue um, dotted blot, uh, the, the box. So the mutations frequency were detected in the range from 3 to 6%. Only two mutations were detected in um, the high frequency, but the result between um, the two duplicates are very similar, indicating these are not false positive. And the second FFP controls 
uh, contain mutations with different mutation frequency that range from 3% to 15%. So the, the table here, sorry, is a little bit small. It's the duplicate results of these 15 mutations that runs in different days. They are pretty similar and they are in very good concordance. Next, we would like to evaluate how efficient is the sequencer and the panel in detecting fusions by using the tissue RNA control. So the first control that we included is the FFP RNA control number one there from Serac and track cell uh Antrac gene fusions. So we could see that all the Antrac genes fusions were detected with a particular um breakpoint in the in the brackets. So which is good. The second RNA controls we also included the five percent Serac K fusion control that contain different types of clinically important fusions. So most of the fusions were detected by ranging from 4% to 7.8%. So these are also very similar to the 5% fusions that are, that are listed um, in this table. <coughs> As we are also running um, the um, pair samples of cell-free DNA as well as the tissue samples by using oncomine pan cancer free assay. So this time we would like to compare the results, uh, the concordance <coughs> in between the oncomine pan cancer cell free assay and also the OPA panel using eight colorectal cancer tissues. For OPA, we evaluate using um, GeneXus and with the oncomine pan cancer cell free assay, the NGX is performed by using Eon um, Gene Studio S5 prime system. We could see that the mutation call from the eight um, tissues are highly concordant that can that in fact achieve with the R square more than um, 0.98 percent, indicating the validity of the mutations that call by this uh, both of these system. As you can see, that the concordance are pretty high in between the the OPA panel as well as the oncomine pan cancer panel. And lastly, which is also of my interest, we also evaluated the system using the cell-free DNA controls with the GeneXus and OPA panels. So we tried three horizon diagnostic cell-free DNA controls with different mutation leaf frequency and one healthy plasma. According to the term officials, the panel is confident in detecting mutations um, up to limit of detection of 0.2%. And in 0.1% um, cell-free DNA control as expected, we detected the mutations that near to 0.2%. The system were able to detect all the mutations in 1% and 5%, and none of these mutations were detected in cell healthy plasma. And we also tried another cell-free DNA control by spiking in the Oncospan um, control into the healthy plasma. We were able to detect mutation as listed here. So the mutation frequency range from 0.11% to 4.02%. And next, I would like to move to the second part of my presentation, that is to evaluate um, the performance of GeneXus integrated sequencer with the OPA panel using cell-free DNA samples from the non-small cell lung cancer. So as I mentioned earlier, I will introduce some of the sequencing parameters that include the molecular data and so on. <coughs> so we using the clinical research samples that are 48 cell-free TNA from the advanced small cell lung cancer and recruited from the Cancer Institute Hospital of Japanese Foundation for Cancer Research. Out of these 48 samples, 19 of them are newly diagnosed with um, EGFR positive, 26 are in fact, um, they show progression disease after the first generation of EGFR, ALK, and also ROS targeted therapy. And three of them are in fact monitoring samples. There are no detectable PD after the EGFR targeted therapy. So this, <coughs> this graph um, summarizes the input and the molecular coverage of 48 samples. As you could see on here, the input cell-free TNA that we use is range from 13 to 20 nanogram. The total turnaround time that we use for these 48 samples is um, 12 working days, which is four samples per day. 
so the median overall risk for this um this this um for the X double is about eight point six million reads, eight point seven million reads. The median overall depth is about thirty thousand more than thirty thousand X. So the median molecular coverage is about a thousand six hundred X and the median molecular coverage for twenty nanogram input is um a thousand seven hundred and seventy eight. In another way, which means that we can get one thousand seven hundred and seven uh, 1,700 of molecular depth with the 20 nanogram input. So we could see that there is um, a range of, this is the, the blue bars is in the in, input of the cell-free DNA and the orange is the molecular depth. So they, we can see that there doesn't have any correlations in the molecular coverage with the input of the cell-free TNA. So in my lab, we also evaluate whether there are amplification preferences within the panel. So we utilize what we call as relative molecular coverage in which we try to divide the molecular coverage of each amplicons with the medium molecular coverage of that particular samples. So to put it in a pretty simple term is if the relative molecular coverage is one, which means that that particular amplicon has the same coverage with the medium molecular coverage. So this particular diagram includes the summary for 48 samples. And this graph, in fact, is divided by the genes, each of the genes that cover in the OPA panel. So we could see that the number of amplicon cover in each of the gene, for example, um, three amplicons for AKT1 and six amplicons for TP53. So there are two points that we could observe from this graph. The first one is besides the AR genes, which is the androgen receptor genes, this gene is located of chromosome X and there are gender variables. The other standard deviation of other amplicons are in fact not big, so not very big, indicating that is there are consistency of the amplifications of the panel and the gene accessibility. The second observation that we could see from this graph is we observe among these two hundred and fifty amplicons, there are a, a, there are fourteen of that have the zero point five relative molecular less than 0 0.5 relative molecular coverage, indicating that molecular depth of this amplicon is half than the medium molecular coverage. Why is this important? Because the low molecular coverage, in fact, um, will directly affect the limit of detections that is the false negative for liquid biopsy. And next, I would like to move into the, the, um, the results for detecting the variants. So among the newly diagnosed um, patients, samples, 14 out of the 19, which is 74% of plasma cell-free DNA detected to carry, um, which is this part, to carry EGFR sensitizing mutations that are included um, the LA5AR exon 19 deletion or G, um, the substitution of G719. And T790M is already known to be um, well known as a resistance mutation for EGFR TKIs. So you can see that if the sensitizing mutations were detected um, in the liquid biopsy, it is in fact complete concordance with the tissue's um, diagnosis. This is a very important information. Among the samples that collected from the patients who experienced the progression disease, 12 out of the 14 were detected to carry the same sensitizing mutations that are in the tissue diagnosis. But as far as we know that um, we also detected seven, um, six out of the 14 samples were detected to carry a T790M. So as expected within the monitoring um, EGFR TKI samples, we do not see any mutations, um, which is indicating that the patients or these samples might um, is still responding to the to the treatment. 
Next, I would like to um, move to the second um, important information for the EGFR TKI. So, in addition to the EGFR mutations that we summarized just now, more than 5% of the samples also carry other mutations on TP53, beta catenine genes, P3CA, BRAF, KRAS, and HER2, um, RB2 genes. So as you can see in this particular report, the concurrent TP53 mutations predict poor outcome of EGFR TKI treatment in Chinese patients with the advanced uh, non-small cell lung cancer. So having the mutations detected in liquid biopsy um, of TP53 mutations is um, important that these patients require more monitoring and it will help in the prognosis of, the, of, of these patients. Additionally, these pie charts also summarize all the mutations that are related to resistance mechanism of EGFR TKIs. As we know that 60% is in fact the T790M that we discussed just now. There are also other mutations that are indicated um, to be related to T, um, EGFR TKI resistance. And we, in our liquid biopsy projects we, we results, we also identified the P3CA and BRAF mutation as well as other additional mutations that might be novel um, resistance me mechanisms that could be identified by this OPA panel. So next, I would like to move to um, the out TKI um, results. So these are already, these um, samples were collected from patients who experience PD after using the ALK um, inhibitor or ROS inhibitor. So 7 out of the 10 ALK um, inhibitors um, were detected to carry at least one mutation and two of them also detected with the ROS1 inhibitors also detected to carry mutations. I would like to emphasize only these three samples that are detected to carry uh, ALK mutations Detected mutation, the detected mutations here are known to be the out inhibitor resistance mutation as we can see in this report. These mutations include um, the I1171S, the G1269A, and G1202R. Those are all um, known resistance mutations that could also pick up by liquid biopsy using the OPA panel. So in conclusion, um, GeneXus Integrator Sequencer is a fully automated and highly accurate NGS system with a one, just one day turnaround time. Hotspot mutations, copy number um, gains of loss, fusion drivers were detected in controlled tissues and cell-free TNA using the Oncomine Precision assay. In our sa um, samples, um, collected from non-small cell lung cancer, sensitizing EGFR mutation were detected approximately 74%, um, and EGFR mutation uh, positive plasma sample were in complete concordance with the tissue samples. In all of the samples, we also identified some known resistance mutations were detected by using this OPA panel. So I would like to show my acknowledgement. Um, so these are my team members, and I would like to particularly um, thanks to the funding agency um, and all of this, um, this project are supported by the AI hospital projects and as well as I thank the patients and their family who participate in all these studies. Thank you so much for your attention.